Yo, what's up, guys? This is Hunter the Rage Dragon. I'm here today to bring you guys another playthrough for the Yumi Neko when they when the sequels cry visual novel. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Starting from here, we're still in episode one, <clears throat> but we're getting there. Still got a long ass way to go. Jesus. Mm. <sighs> あす<笑> 月曜日には予定を入れなかったから大丈夫さ。こう見えてもスケジュールは先読みできるタイプなんだ。George puffs out his chest, acting proud. Compared to the calm appearance George always had as the eldest cousin, he now looks amusingly like a little kid. It Shannon chuckled at this abrupt contrast. <laughs> さすが。やがては会社を起こされる方はしっかりしていますね。やっぱり会社を起こすというのは大変だね。うん。お金とかそういうのだけじゃないものが<笑> うちの父さんは秀吉って名前だけあって戦国武将のエピソードがとても好きでね。会社経営の哲学をよくそこから語るんだ。知ってるかい戦国最強の騎馬軍団と恐れられた武田信玄も最初は部下たちの結束がバラ
すみません。私も別にそういう意味で言ったつもりは。Not what you meant, but that's how you said it. The two of them awkwardly look at their feet. Oh my god, kids. Shannon had no parents. She had been brought up in an orphanage owned by Kinzo called the Fukuin House. Under the guidance of Kinzo, their honorary director, the orphanage offered members who excelled a chance for on the job serv、um, serving experience. If their efforts met with Kinzo's approval, they'd be able to leave the orphanage and work as servants for the Ushiromiya family. Oh, really? Is that true? This was considered to be the highest honor for those who lived in the orphanage. Servants from the Fukuin house all took names with the character on in them while they served. So Shannon wasn't her real name. The same went for Canon. All of the members of the Fukuin house. Were orphans. At least they were all people who had been separated from their parents under special circumstances. Because of this, the orphans had been taught to think of each other as their only family. That's why it seemed so natural to both of them when Kenan called Shannon his sister. And while both Shannon and Kenan were working in the mansion today, There were several other、uh, servants posing, possessing the character in their names, such as Manon and Lenon, who often worked in a rotation schedule. However, there were not many servants who stayed with the Ushiomiya family for long. It was standard for them to quit after three years. So you could probably say that Shannon, who had been working for ten years, was a notable exception to the rule. Working as a servant for the Ushiomiya family was a heavy burden to bear, but the pay wasn't bad at all. Working for a full three years would earn more than what was needed to enter mainstream society. That was why, even though the orphans realized what a harsh task working for the Ushiomiya family was, they still hoped to be accepted. Maybe the fact that Shannon managed to continue working for 10 years wasn't because she had more willpower than the other servants. Maybe she'd gotten stuck working for 10 years because she didn't have the courage to say she wanted to quit. Kinzo couldn't even trust his own blood relatives, and those excellent servants sent from the Fukuin house were the only ones he could rely on. Because of that, Kinzo would sometimes allow them to wear the family crest as servants under his direct control and have them work close to him. Eto, sono, mo, tsutome te, junen chikaku ni naru ndake. Yep. Daibu, o kane mo tamatta n janai kai? Do de s h o u It's not like there was anything in particular I'd like to buy. h o n o a n b e k m a n k a t a t e s o r e d e no Corino j i n s e o s u o s e r a k e m a r i m a s e s i Uh, yeah, it is. Live fru- if you live frugally, actually. Mokio no Gakuna at the Otsomeo Tuzuketer Wakija Nino Kai? So, so this ne. You get a few million, you can live comfortably with a steady job. Have you now? Because it kind of feels like everybody's bullying you. All the time. Shannon cast her eyes downwards when she heard her real name. She understood what George was trying to say and fell silent. 僕は成人し
社会人になってからも勉強して分かったことがある子どもの頃僕らが思っていたほど人生は単調で短くないんだ A school age kids had certain fears they couldn't shake. They wonder whether they'll live the rest of their lives like slippy classes after a monotonous and boring school day, spending their time in a carefree laziness without anything interesting happening until it's all over. However, life's only like that for underage students. Compared to a human's life, the time they spend as students is nothing more than a blink of the eye, a period where they break through the shells of their immaturity. The insides of the shell might be, as, might be a hot, suffocating, and boring world, but the world beyond that shell is vast and filled with limitless possibilities. Kimino Jinseva, Mada Shannon to you, Karano Nakarishka Nainda. Kimiwa. 自分の人生がこの生活のままずっと続いていくと勘違いしてるんじゃないかなそれは<笑> Shannon couldn't deny those words She'd been unable to harbor any clear doubt about her lifestyle And since she never had any hope or goals for the changing herself She'd lazily continued living the way she always had And if asked whether this life was satisfying, she wouldn't have been able to nod. She may have been intentionally averting her eyes from the truth without George's admission meant it, she would have continued pretending not to notice her real life slip away bit by bit neglected. George, I'm not going to be able to do this for this long time. いけないよ。Not necessarily, but kinda. あ、それから今、ルール違反が一つあったね。George immediately got a strict answer, then broke out into a mischievous smile. Shannon already knew what she was being chided for, and she hung her head again, apparently embarrassed. 僕たちしかいないときは、様はなしの約束だよ。Uh -oh. 約束では聞けません。<笑>ですが、ご命令でしたら聞かないわけにはいきません。私は、家具ですから。じゃあ、命令だよ。<laughs> As Shannon hung her head, her face red, she said George's name again, this time following it with son. <laughs> George smiled at Shannon, no, Sayo, to praise her small act of bravery. This short exchange alone made it clear how far back their relationship must have stretched. For a long while, the two talked as if the weather raging about them didn't even enter their thoughts. They talked about the many memories they'd built during their relationship that no one else knew about. Every once in a while, a flash of lightning would attempt to interrupt them, but this could suddenly, suddenly. Either the rose nor the time they spit blushing at each other. <laughs> so, so that. Kimi ni mise tai mono ga atte. Uh oh. Here we go. <laughs> George, who had been speaking eloquently, suddenly started to stutter. Watching him, Shannon seemed to guess something. George timidly searched through his pocket. 
Something got caught in the depths of his pocket and just like the stuttering George, it took a little while to get it out. It was a very small box. A smog box covered in a deep blue velvet. That particular shape was enough to tell anyone what was resting inside. Shannon had prepared her heart somewhat, certain beforehand that this was what he'd been planning. But even so, when she actually saw it, she couldn't avoid blushing once more. George opened the small box, took something out, and held it out for Shannon to take. Your boy, I um glasses just fogged up. Yeah, you can. You've been listening to his mother, huh? Sayo, Koreba Onega Janai. Mere Dayo, Kono Yubiwa Uketote. Ne. Mere Dewa, Stagawa Nakteva Narimasa. <laughs> oh my was not expecting that Shannon not wanting to show her bright red face timidly accept the ring from George just hand while still staring at the ground oh my wait a minute that is a beautiful picture right there. <laughs> uh, my boy George. Oh, whoops. Uh, that ring wasn't a simple accessory. It was a noble object meant since ancient times to be offered to a special woman under cert special circumstances. Therefore, while George could order her to take it, he could not order anything beyond that. Anything beyond that would depend not on an order, but on Shannon's, no, Sayo's own whim, whim, will, the... Dakara, koko kara wa mou meirei janai. Sayo, ashita made ni kotoba de nai katachi de henji ga moraitai. He want a kiss. Wakaru ne. Wait, why didn't she just give you your, her answer today? Uh, you gonna give her... You're you gonna give her a day to think about it. Okay. You said give her... もうこれ以上は命令じゃないから僕は君に命令はしないでも指輪は指にするものだからね気に入ってくれたなら Put it on your ring finger, girl. Shannon had only pretended not to know. <laughs> she already understood what he wanted her to do. But she was standing at a huge crossroads of her life. George turned away from Shannon, acting just as, just a bit bluntly. I could uh, order you to do it, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Maybe I should he want that last step. So, he said, I can tell you which finger to wear it on, but I want you to make the final step to accept or not. Oh. 
はいだからそれが命令今夜よく考えて明日その返事を見せてほしい<笑> Shannon nodded back Today was the culmination of their many days spent together. This moment certainly hadn't come as a, a surprise to Shannon. So, 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 She's gonna run. <laughs> no, it's not. George stared into Shannon's face as he laughed mischievously. Okay, my boy. <laughs> Just... He definitely saw through Shannon's lie. However, when he saw how she felt, he could sort of understand that she might be so embarrassed that she'd want to be alone. So, because George realized the meaning behind Shannon's lie, he accepted it. Sayo. Uh oh. We're at 11 o'clock. Oh, this gonna be good.